All right, so we are here in Studio One version 6.5, and the headline feature in 6.5 is Dolby Atmos integration. So in this video, what we're going to do is just going to take kind of like a really quick overview. We're going to talk about some basics in terms of setting things up, just so you can kind of understand this. Now, first and foremost, how do we activate Dolby Atmos or a spatial audio mode within Studio One? Well, I guess one thing I should also explain is that it is not just Dolby Atmos, but if you take a look at any of these tracks here, notice that we can now adjust between mono, stereo, uh, 3.0. We have two different flavors of 4.0, 5.0, 5.1, everything up to 9.1.6 in terms of our track widths. So let's go and open up our song setup. And in the general tab, we have a new tab over here called Spatial Audio. And we have two different modes in which we can work. We can either work in surround, which will give us our basic surround format. So for example, we could choose anything over here, 5.1, if you wanted to do basic 5.1 work or whatever the case is, or we have Dolby Atmos. Now, when we have Dolby Atmos, we have two different options in terms of choosing a bed format. In this case, I'm going to go with 7.1.2. And then also we have an option to choose an output format. Now, I don't want anybody to get confused on this, but basically the way that you can think about this is this is going to match your room. So if I had a full setup with 7.1.4, I could set this to output 7.1.4, and then I would have my left, my center, my right, my left surround, my right surround, my left rear surround, my right rear surround, and then my left top front and my right top front and my left rear top and my right rear top. So we would have the full setup, including the sub. So you're gonna set this to match. That being said, we also have some integration in terms of allowing us to work in binaural mode with headphones, which is what we're going to focus on here. So now that we know how to set that up, we can set this up through clicking the general tab, spatial audio, choosing Dolby Atmos, choosing our bed format, um, which I think in general, leaving that 7.1.2 is a good idea, and our output format, sample rate, um, I'm gonna leave this set to 48, but you can work at 48 or 96. Now, in terms of getting things set up a little bit further, if you take a look at the very right-hand corner in my console, I have the Dolby Atmos channel. If I click this, this opens up the Dolby Atmos renderer. The first thing I wanna to bring to your attention is if you click this wrench icon, this gives you the option to enable additional headphone output. I think for the most part, you would always wanna have this set up. So if you enable this, then we have this extra little drop down menu where we can choose between binaural and stereo. Now I'm going to go to my IO setup briefly. Notice I cleared out all of my IO setup in terms of my inputs. Reason being that when I'm working in Dolby Atmos, at least for now, I'm seeing this as two separate phases. Either I've done pre-mixing or I've printed stems and I'm ready to take something into a Dolby Atmos mix or work on, on headphones in a binaural format, but I'm only setting up outputs for what I need. I'm not concerned with any of my outboard gear or anything like that. Now, there's a couple different approaches that we can take. For now, while I'm building my Atmos room, while I'm waiting for speakers to come in and while I'm setting up the interfaces, I have all of my ADA outputs set up in order to output almost like a phantom mix because actually my system that I'm working on here is still stereo. Now I could have changed my output format to stereo, but in this case, I'm actually going to leave it set up like this. Now the headphone outputs, the minute we create that headphone output, which we can do by clicking the wrench icon and making sure that this option over here is enabled, this will then automatically populate a headphones fader in your console. And we can access this routing if we click the I.O. setup over here. I can tell this exactly what output routing I want it to follow. Also notice over here that we can choose to make this something different. So if I did want to change my format in terms of what I'm outputting, in terms of the main outs of my actual Studio One song, this is something I could do here. I'm going to leave this set to 7.1.4 though. Okay, enough talking. Let's talk about some other basics. One of the things I really like about the way that this is set up is that all you really need to make sure that you do is if you're working with a mono track or a stereo track, all we have to do is right click the pan mode over here and then we have the option to choose surround panner or spatial object panner. What are the differences between the two of these? Well, surround panner is going to be for your Dolby Atmos bed track, in which case I'm doing a 7.1.2 bed, which I can see over here in the channel overview, in this micro view of the Dolby Atmos renderer. So anything that I want to be kind of like a foundation that's part of the beds, I can route that automatically 
leave that routed to a surround panner, which will route it to the beds. And I believe that is the default in addition. Now, when you want to start panning other elements, we have the option to right click and we can change from something, for example, let's take a look at this one over here. This by default would go to the beds. If I solo this track out and I press play, notice it's going to the beds. Now, if I take this and I change it to a spatial object panner, notice now it's no longer going to the beds, but it's being routed directly to the renderer. Let's click this little wrench icon and we can actually see this over here, right here. So I'm not really going to make this video about how you should go about doing things. I just want this to be kind of like a general overview. Now, another thing that you can do, and this is something that there's a lot of information available that's online. There's a couple engineers who are kind of pioneering the way that we approach mixing with Dolby Atmos. And one of those is Steve Genowick. You can find a lot of content from him speaking about this subject on, on places like Pure Mix and things like that. But he kind of had this approach where instead of using bed tracks, because objects are so awesome and they ensure the most future compatibility with any future formats that are be able to play back Dolby Atmos mixes and handle these XY coordinates in the best possible way for translation. He pioneered this approach of using uh, what he calls object beds. So instead of sending something to the bed track, which is kind of like a very, it's not antiquated, it's just a, it's, it's a multi-channel way, but it, it can never really change. The beauty of the Dolby Atmos playback system is that it can use headphones, it could use a sound bar, it can use special stuff that bounces things all over the place to create the impression of having more uh, of an immersive audio environment than you already have. So what he talked about is creating Atmos beds. Now what these are is essentially just bus channels, stereo bus channels. Dolby Atmos, when you route to an object, it can either be stereo or mono. And then all you need to do is if I changed my mind and I wanted to route some of these, but I wanted them to be kind of like fixed positioning, basically anchoring down some exact points where we have very, very specific elements that are panned out a very specific way. And we could take like the sides left and right, things like that. And these will always be seen as the same thing. So in that case, then we could actually change the routing instead of using our lead vocal over here. I could actually just change the routing to some of my object beds. So once you kind of get your head around the concept of beds and objects, that is the basics. Now, it is very hard for me to give an honest impression of how this would feel in terms of an immersive context. Also, the other thing to take into account is the headphones you're listening on. They've got a lot to do with everything. In addition to that, your brain's ability to decode spatial audio, or, or rather I should say to decode binaural audio and how you perceive that. I'll give you an example. Some people might listen to something and be able to hear if something is behind them or to the side of them or in front of them or on top of the ceiling or down below just over headphones. Whereas other people might have a really, really hard time discerning between the differences. Also, if you've spent a lot of time mixing in stereo and monitoring in stereo, I have found it to be pretty difficult for my brain to kind of decode the binaural. So I'm not sure how useful it is in order to kind of like stream my binaural mix because it only re will really make sense if you're listening on headphones. That being said, I do want to give an impression of what this is doing. So let's take a listen to let's take a listen to these background vocals. This would be a really really good example of everything. I'm going to play from here. Let's actually play from this section right over here. I'm going to take the guitars out. So we have some basic panning that we can do even from the channel view. If we take a look at these background vocals over here, I have adjusted the height over here. Take a listen as this is playing.
Now, another thing that we can do is we can also increase the size. Notice this positioning over here. Let me actually first, let's reset this for a moment and let's bring this back to where it was, which is right. Let's bring it back to about here and I'm going to reset the size or I'm going to adjust the size as this is playing. I don't know if you can see that, but you have these circles over here that are increasing as I adjust this size. Now, in addition to that, if we open up the Dolby Atmos renderer right over here, you'll notice that we have the ability to set the binaural mode. So on each one of these tracks, so for example, I've set the background vocals to be far. Take a listen to what happens. Let's start with it off. Now let's go to near. Maybe a best example would be to take it from far all the way to off. Now the other thing that you can do directly from within Studio One, directly from within this channel strip over here, or if you have the Dolby Atmos renderer open, is you can toggle between the binaural output, which is the binaural encoding of your immersive mix that you're listening to over headphones versus the stereo fold down, because all of this is happening automatically in the background. So if we take a listen, let's take, let's go out of solo for a moment and let's take a listen to first the stereo of the whole entire mix. Let's pull down this two mix. Let's go to binaural. Now it's obviously sounds very different. There's a lot of different reasons for this because there's a lot of things that are going on. There's a lot of psychoacoustic stuff that's happening to basically translate that immersive mix into a binaural audio that you're listening to over headphones. So in addition to just the obvious of your brain decoding it, the other thing to take into consideration is making sure that you're using a pair of headphones that has a good translation and not, I'm not just talking about allowing you to hear something in binaural, but I'm also talking about something that translates any mixed decisions that you might be making over headphones in addition to just the spatial aspect of everything. So there is a lot that I'm throwing at you in this video, and I'm going to be covering a lot more with respect to how Studio One handles working with Atmos, how to set things up and things like that. But I wanted to definitely do a basic video just to cover some of the kind of like hit the ground running type of stuff. But the other thing to take into consideration is because of the immense amount of information and the channel counts that we're talking about here, keep in mind, we can go up to a 9.1.6 configuration, but I think a really basic standard would be something like 7.1.4. What this means is that we need to be able to fold this down to a potential binaural mix, which is two channels. So it becomes very important to monitor your loudness. And in this case, we have a built-in loudness integration that we have directly from within here. So I could, for example, reset this. And then as we play, notice that we have an integrated level, our loudness range average, and then we also have our true peak. Now, in addition to having this, we also have a main mix volume, which is controlling the overall level of our mix. And we could obviously trim this back. Technically speaking, you could even use this as a volume control, but it's definitely going to impact or affect the volume that is getting rendered when you export your ADM master file. So I don't know if I would necessarily rely on that in general, but in this case, I just have all these stems set up to a VCA. And I can see over here that uh, in terms of my true peak, I have a lot of headroom. I've still got around 5 dB. And I could go up 1.1 dB on this right now. So I could go up to, for example, let's go to four, or, or rather let's go to 
three, and then we'll go to 2.9, and this would probably be okay. So if I reset this again and let this play. Okay, see, so there we're in the ballpark, and this is obviously dependent on the whole entire duration of your song. Now, one last thing that I wanna talk about before we wrap this video up, I know it's a lot that I'm throwing at you, and I'm trying to do this in the most easy to digest way, is that we do have a couple rules that we need to follow, and one of those is that our system becomes kind of locked in at a block size or a buffer of 512. So notice if I go to my audio device block size, the maximum I can hit over here is 512. We don't have 1024, we don't have 2048. In addition to that, if we go to our processing tab, I only have the options to change. I don't have high or anything like that. And if I change this, it doesn't make any change at all because the Dolby Atmos renderer needs to, I'm, I'm assuming needs to, doesn't just like to, but it needs to work at a device block size of 512. So this is something to take into consideration. If you are planning on producing in immersive, then we're gonna have to take advantage of some of Studio One's unique tools like being able to render stems or being able to transform our instruments to audio tracks. Even if we need to go back and change things, we need to make sure that we're kind of managing our system resources so that we're not capping out our system um, needing to go past that 512 mark. The other thing to take into consideration too is any latency that's happening if you're trying to perform with virtual instruments or anything like that. So this is a basic primer video on Dolby Atmos. I do plan on doing a ton more content. If I'm being truthful, I am actually building a Dolby Atmos Studio with the new Personas speakers, the Eurus Pros that they launched. I will actually be building a full 7.1.4 setup I'm still kind of uh, ironing out the details in terms of what interfaces I'm gonna use and how I'm gonna set things up. But I do plan to be doing a ton of content in Immersive or Dolby Atmos specific to Studio One. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll catch you for more in the next one. Cheers.